Welcome, Megan, to the On Iowa podcast. Welcome, Jeff. How are y'all doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Good How are you doing? <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm super excited to have you on the podcast and uh, previewing women's basketball. Always good to give women's sports some airtime out here. Um, yeah, my big question, because I am from Texas, I'm from the Fort Worth area, not quite Dallas, but I wanted to know how, like from your experience, how has Texas been for you? Yeah, obviously it was a little bit of an adjustment, um, especially my rookie year because I was in markets um, this past year, we were in the bubble. So that was, you know, Florida, Florida weather. So yeah, the weather was definitely hard to get used to in Dallas. It's super hot, um, a lot different than Wisconsin, like way different. Um, but it was kind of nice. Um, I love the food there. I think um, it's just an overall fun environment to be a part of, especially, um, you know, this last year before we went into the bubble, I was able to spend a couple weeks in Dallas. Um, and then obviously my rookie year, I was there too. Yeah, I'm curious, do you have like some favorite taco spots, some favorite barbecue spots? What are your you know, I haven't been able to explore too much, but um, I love Babe's Chicken. Uh, so good. It's actually right next to the arena. So a lot of us would, you know, after before or after games or on off days, we'd go over there and, and check it out. Very good. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that Texas is treating you well. And where are you Zooming in from right now? I know you're overseas. Yeah, I'm actually in Poland right now. I'm about um, two hours east of Berlin, Germany. So I'm pretty close to the Germany border. Um, I've been here since, let's see, beginning of, end of September, right after the WNBA season. And um, I was able to go home a couple of times for breaks. But yeah, other than that, I've, I've been here. And what has been like the coolest part about playing overseas so far? Have you seen, done any sightseeing while you've been there? I know it's hard with COVID. Yeah, this year has been a lot different, especially with all the different restrictions going on. Um, I have not been able to do a whole lot of touring around. I went to Warsaw a little bit with my dog um, in November when we had a couple of days off. So that was fun. But other than that, it's just been a lot of basketball and coming to my apartment and sleeping, trying to recover and get ready for the next game or practice. So you brought your dog overseas with you? <laughs> I did. Yeah. So she was with me for most of my time here. Um, I went back home in end of January and early February for about 10 days. And I decided to leave her back for the last part of the season because we have a lot of playoffs. So we're traveling a lot. Um, but yeah, she's, she's my travel companion for sure. Oh my gosh. Must be like an A plus travel companion. I can't imagine like bringing a pet on a very long flight. <laughs> yeah. She's a trooper. She actually has um, a Polish passport. Um, because she is from Poland. I got her, I got her here last year when I was playing in Hungary. So um, she has a lot of stamps. That's for sure. Wait, that's so cool. I Your know. dog has to get a passport? <laughs> yes. It's, it's usually just for like health, health reasons. You have to get them checked by a vet before you travel and you get the stamp to say that she's healthy and she can travel. So I, I never knew that before I got pancake, but yeah. Wait, like, what is that process? Do you just, do you have to get, send a photo and everything against like a white background? Um, you don't have to, you can, if you want. But when I, when I got pancake, she came with a Polish passport. So I didn't really need to do much, which was super nice. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so interesting. What a world traveler. <laughs> she really is. <laughs> so have you been able to watch a lot of like women's basketball, college basketball overseas with the time difference and everything? Obviously it's been pretty hard because we are seven hours ahead, but I always try to catch a game whenever I can, especially the Hawks. Um, it's been really fun to watch them this past year, especially with the run that they just had at the big 10 tournament, you know, that, that tournament will always have special memories for me. And I know um, I try to stay in contact with a lot of them. I'm, I have a group chat with all the coaches. I talk to them well, about weekly, probably on the group chat or I'm texting coach Jay or coach Bluter or FaceTiming with them. So um, I still have a really close connection with the program. Yeah. And what would you say is, um, you know, how do you remember, I think this was actually in one of our Twitter questions. What is like the feeling in general of being on that kind of stage at the NCAA tournament? Um, what does that feel like? And what advice would you have to like younger players that 
are entering this week. It's such a special feeling to be able to be a part of the NCAA tournament or even the conference tournament. Um, it just feels like a whole new season, to be honest. And I think that's how we treated it my senior year, especially. Um, you have to you have to have a short term memory when it comes to playing in those types of games and environments. Um, you know, the Big Ten tournament, for example, we played three games in three days. I know this year they played four games in four days. And so you have to, you know, celebrate quick, but move on to the next game, because if you don't, um, you can get satisfied, you can get comfortable and um, you can't do that until, until you get that championship, until you get that big 10 championship, until you get that national championship. And so same mentality going into the NCAA tournament, um, you know, you just have to be ready for everything. And, you know, I don't really think that there's upsets to be honest when you get to the point of the NCAA tournament because every single team deserves to be there and they're so good it doesn't matter if they're a 15 seed or a one seed you know I think they're all competing and they're all competing especially their seniors are competing for um, their careers so it's it's a really fun environment to be a part of and I do miss it for sure I bet um, I'm already trying to fill out my brackets and everything and do the best I can. But I think that's what everybody says. It's like filling out the perfect bracket. You can know as much as you want about each seed, but there's bound to be some unexpected plays, some unexpected winners. Um, I'm going to bring Jeff in to ask some more X's and O's and some more like tournament matchup questions and hot takes of you. So I'll just hand the mic off to Jeff, the invisible mic. Mm -hmm. Megan, uh, this seems like kind of a, uh, you know, a really wide open year uh, in the NCAA. There's probably seven or eight teams that probably could go all the way. Um, you know, you start with UConn and they're, um, you know, you got your Baylors and South Carolinas and Stanford's and all those. Does, is that kind of the way you see it too, that you, you say it's, you know, um, there really are no upsets. Do, do you see a favorite in this year's tournament? Yeah, I totally agree with you, Jeff. I think that this year, especially, there aren't any um, really dominant teams that have been able to show that, you know, they, they're probably going to win the championship or get really far. And I think that's a really big opportunity for a lot of teams who maybe aren't seated as high as they want to or, um, you know, who really want to make some noise in the tournament. Um, you know, I think that's an exciting, exciting time, especially for Iowa, I think this year they surprised a lot of people in the Big Ten tournament. I'm obviously always going to talk about Iowa because I'm I'm a little biased, but um, you know they've they put together a really special run, and um, you know obviously there are some tough teams like UConn, um, like South Carolina, Stanford. You know there are always going to be those tough teams, but I think this year um, they've been knocked down a little bit, and I think that that's going to be um, something that teams like Iowa or whoever else are going to have to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess people ask me, you know, how, how good is this team? And, and I, I, I compare this team a lot to the team that you were on your junior year, um, the, the team that, uh, you know, got beat by Creighton in the first round. But just maybe, you know, obviously a, a very good team, but maybe a team that might be a year away from something really, really big. Uh, do you kind of see that analogy, too? I agree. You know, I think it's been really fun to watch them play this year and develop. Um, I think that they are still young. Um, obviously, they have a leader in Caitlin Clark. She's a phenomenal player, but she's only a freshman. Um, you have Monica. She's only a junior. And so um, to be able to see them grow, I think it's going to be important for them to get this experience in the NCAA tournament this year, learn from what how far they go. And, and you know, they could make a really long run, and I think they're definitely capable of it. Um, but I think it, what's really going to be important is taking the lessons learned from this year and really emphasizing into the years to come because you know I think if this team keeps at the pace that they are they're going to really create some special memories coming up in the next few years. You talked briefly about Monica and uh, I know she still considers you her you know one of her big mentors um, you know how much joy how much pride do you get seeing what she's doing this year she was 48 out of 62 in the four games at in Indianapolis uh, set a Big Ten tournament record for points, a Big Ten tournament record for field goals. Um, how, how much of a kick do you get out of seeing what she's doing? It's been incredible to watch her grow. And, um, you know, obviously I played with her when she was a freshman. And just to see that 
um, you know, up close to see where she was um, and to see where she's grown now. It's really cool. And it's really just a credit to her work that she's put in each and every day. She was able to learn from, from me, my, my senior year and to see what I was able to do. And, you know, we were always in the gym together. I'd always go pick her up out of class and we'd go to the gym and we'd shoot or I'd go to breakfast and we'd go shoot beforehand. Um, and so, you know, that was my goal at Iowa, especially when I was, you know, starting to leave was I wanted to be able to um, help those younger girls um, know what the culture is supposed to be at Iowa and that the culture is to be able to always focus on the team and what you can do to, for the team in terms of your work ethic, in terms of your leadership. And so I'm just so proud. I, it's kind of, it's sad though, because I don't get to watch everything because I am seven hours ahead of time. So I don't always get to see their games and to see her play live, but I'm always looking at the social media highlights of her and um, couldn't be more proud. Who was that for you? Who kind of got you kickstarted at Iowa? Uh, was it Chase Coley? Was it, was it Jan? Uh, you know, or what, what did that just kind of come from within you? You know, when I came in, um, you know, Chase was definitely one of the post players that I looked up to. Um, she was definitely the person that tried to get me out of my shell a little bit. She's pretty goofy. If you, I know you know that. Um, and so just having her around was awesome to have that light energy, super welcoming. I think that was really what helped me, you know, come into Iowa. Um, yeah, but it was definitely Coach Jay. I think, you know, everything that she taught me, um, you know, made me to the made me the player I am today. Um, just the little things that she would critique, especially my freshman and sophomore year. Um, you know, she'd push me really hard those years. And by the time I was a junior, senior, you know, she didn't really say much. Um, but it's the tribute to what she, she kind of put into, um, into me so early in developing me. Um, I was able to really just learn from her, um, you know, learn what I can do for the team instead of, what's what's going to make my stats look better you know I never cared about any of that I still don't um and so it's just been really fun to see her also develop Monica now I think one thing that really endeared you to Iowa fans was just your humility um you, you were a superstar but you didn't act like it I, I don't think you even considered yourself a superstar when you were at Iowa um you know just kind of when did you realize that, you know, hey, I, I've arrived, I'm, I'm here and I'm, you know, I'm a force to be reckoned with? You know, I think um, that freshman year is always, you know, a lot of an adjustment and I was just kind of surviving each and every day, to be honest. That's kind of how most freshmen, freshmen are. But um, I think, you know, by the time it was the end of my freshman year, I had, I had experience. I think, I think I made the all freshman team. Um, in the Big Ten. Um, so that gave me a little bit of momentum going into my sophomore year. And, um, you know, I think that jump from my sophomore to junior year was pretty big for me. Um, and so I think that also grew my confidence. It was just the little things I think that built up to it. But my confidence grew um, each and every day because of my teammates. They they were always trying to get me the ball inside and, and the coaches were always emphasizing, you know, what I could do for the team. And, you know, by the time I was junior well junior and senior year like I stepped onto the court every single time I knew I was the best the best post player out there um and that's just my mentality kind of going into it and so that's obviously a mentality that's you know something you have to build up with confidence over time but um it's kind of my mentality that was going into my last two years there how much of a transition I, I know you and I have talked about this before but how much of a transition was uh Port Wayne Wisconsin to Iowa City um, going from a town of 160, uh, you graduated with 11, I believe, yep. uh, going to, there to, uh, you know, to the Big Ten. Yeah, it was obviously a, a pretty big adjustment. Um, you know, I think, again, that was what was a hard adjustment for me is just getting used to being around people all the time, you know, whether I'm in class or I'm going to practice or I'm you know, going to games, I'm always around people. I'm not, I wasn't used to that, you know, growing up, I was just, I'd go to school, I'd come home, hang out with my parents and my sister. Like that was it. There was, I know I, I hadn't really been interacting with a lot of people, but um, I'm thankful. I had a lot of welcoming people like Chase, you know, like, like those um, people who are, who are used to that and they were able to really, 
you know, helped me along the process. And um, I'm a lot more social now because of it. So <laughs> what would you say a successful run would be for Iowa? Uh, you know, in the coming weeks, uh, I guess I would say winning at least one game would be, you know, a really good stepping stone for next year. A sweet 16 would be great. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, after that, it's going to get really, really tough because you got probably have UConn in the sweet 16. But, you know, what would you you know, as, as an alum, as, as a former player, what would you say uh, a successful run would be? I would agree. I think being able to win at least one game would be, would be big, especially, um, you know, for those younger players to experience a win in the NCAA tournament. It's one thing to make it. It's another whole different ball game to win one, two, three, four games um, in that tournament. Obviously it gets harder each and every time. Um, but I think, I don't think they should sell themselves short. I think I think they need to go big, go big. You know, I know that they're young, but um, if you don't set those really high standards from day one, um, then you're not building a, a championship culture. And I think you know, Sweet Sixteen, Elite Eight, hey, keep keep striving for those. And um, you know, I think that's what we did my senior year, even before the season started. We said we want to win a Binghamton championship, and we want to get to at least the Elite Eight, and we did. Um, and so I think setting high standards is going to be important for them. Um, what, what can this team be in 21-22? Is this a potential Elite Eight Final Four team next year? I think so. Um, you know, I think that, again, they're going to be – they're going to be still going to be young. Um, you know, Caitlin Clark's only going to be a sophomore at this point. And so, um, you know, they're going to be good. And Monica's going to be a senior. It's going to be really fun to watch her, her play. Um, you know, they've got some really – awesome leaders too they've got Kate Martin who's just tough as nails um you know we both have the nose um the nose breaking there not fun but I know that she she battles hard and she's such a good leader for her team so um you know I think if not next year it's going to be in the next two three years when they're going to be um really just projecting success everywhere and everyone's going to be hearing about it um, fr from what you see, you know, I, I know you haven't seen a whole lot of them, but what, what do you think of Sharon Goodman? Uh, is she kind of like, um, like Monica was as a freshman? I, I mean, you know, there's a lot of potential there, it looks like. Yeah, I definitely see some similarities there between Monica kind of mentoring her and, and trying to help her um, try to figure out college ball, what it's all about. Um, it was really fun to watch her you know, especially in the Big Ten tournament come in for Monica whenever she had foul trouble or needed a breather, she came in and she was really solid. Um, you know, that's just a testament to who Monica is and it's a testament to who Coach Jay is. Coach Jay is by far the best post coach developer in the country. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a little biased. I mean, I am biased, but um, I know it's true. Um, she's proved it year after year after year um, before I was way before I was here and wait and now after. And so, I'm just excited to see her growth. And, you know, I think another thing is that another thing to point out is that Monica, she's not me, she's Monica and, and Sharon's not Monica. She's Sharon. And each, each post player that has gone through this program has kind of written their own story in, in a little bit in a, of a different way. And I think that's, what's so beautiful about um, these different stories that you hear about. Leah, you want to take over again? Yeah, I'm curious myself, like going back to being a part of the WNBA and also you're a part of this era of like college basketball for women that's also like more eyeballs have been on co women's college basketball and professional basketball. Like this WNBA season, I think that the viewership went up 68% in the bubble. And I'm curious, like, what is it like to be a part of this like surge in women's sports history and yeah like what is it like to be a part of that it's amazing especially just to be around those incredible women every single day um, especially in the bubble this last year I was able to see them not just at games but walking around in the lobby or lounging by the pool I mean um, it really grows confidence in yourself too uh, because you know I'm a part of this group and I deserve to be here um, and it's just it's a lot of fun to be around um, that kind of environment when women's sports is so people are excited about it and people are watching and tuning in and, and it's all over social media about what this female athlete did. Um, and so I'm just excited to see where the growth goes this year. Um, you know, hopefully we'll be back in markets 
Um, not that the bubble wasn't bad, but I think I'd prefer, I think everyone would prefer to be able to live as normally as they can um, while still being safe. And so, um, you know, every year, it's, every year it's a battle too. Um, you have to battle for your spot and to keep it. And so I'm excited to do that this year. Is there anybody from the league that you've kind of fangirled for a while and then you met them in person? You were like, oh my gosh, like, were you absolutely starstruck by anybody that you've met so far? I think that that's just a lot of the, the athletes in the WNBA. You know, you grew up hearing about, you know, the Skylar Diggins, Elena Deladon, Brittany Griner, all of them. You know, Skylar Diggins was the first big name that I met, obviously, because she was my teammate uh, my, my rookie year. But, um, you know, after being around the league for a couple of years, you just kind of get used to it. You know, they're just kind of a fellow WNBA player that you know. And um, as you grow more friends in the league, it it that goes away actually. And I never thought it would when I first got here, but but it's still exciting. It's still exciting though. Where do you think women's sports has like left to grow? I think this was kind of related to some of our Twitter questions. Yeah, I think there's still a lot of growth to be made. Um, you know, I think that the viewership is there and it's starting to grow, but I think it definitely has a long ways to go. Um, you know, I think in the areas of social justice and um, standing up for different rights, different human rights is, has been a forefront of what the WNBA is all about. And I think people are only realizing that recently. And I think people need to know that, no, the WNBA has been advocating for these rights for so many years prior um, and they will continue to. And, um, you know, that I, my hope is that people don't see this as just a trend that they'll continue to support the women, not just on the basketball court, but off the basketball court, because some of the things that um, we've done in the league is really important off the court. If, you know, it's, it's really more important than what we do on the court. And so, um, you know, I think just continuing to follow these women in, in their pursuits off the court is going to be important as well. I think what's particularly striking about the WNBA is how much social action it has taken like all the teams. And um, I know that that counters the idea, this idea that politics don't belong in sports. And I'm wondering what you have learned from being in the midst of like a huge movement, which really took over the entire WNBA as far as race, as far as politics. So I'm curious from your perspective, what you have learned from especially this past year. Yeah, I think if anything, I've learned that um, basketball is so much more than just a game. It's, it's so much more about shut up and dribble or whatever that narrative is. Um, you know, it's actually about um, being on a platform for trying to help the world be a better place. Um, that's kind of something that, you know, I've thought of in my position is I play basketball for something bigger than myself. I play for God. I play for my family. Um, you know, I'm just trying to be an inspiration for other people. Um, to realize their dreams. And I think that's what the WNBA is trying to amplify too, is they want to be a platform to um, represent people that look like them, that people that um, want to aspire to be them. And so um, it's definitely way more than just a basketball game. Yeah. And so I'm going to get into some of our Twitter questions. And one of them was, what is the difference between playing in the WNBA and playing overseas? Yeah, there's actually quite a bit of difference. Um, you know, WNBA is definitely really fast. I think it's the fastest pace I've ever been a part of, especially my rookie year. I was just a deer in the headlights, to be honest, the first little bit there. Um, but you get used to it. And, um, you know, both leagues are definitely physical. I honestly think overseas, um, it might be a little more physical in terms of, things you can get away with, things that you have to kind of battle through. Um, um, but I mean, obviously the WNBA is very physical too. You're going against bigger bodies um, physically in the WNBA. But I think overseas, um, there's a lot more, um, I guess a lot less freedom and a lot more um, tactics, a lot more, okay, we're gonna run these plays to get this, this, and this. Um, whereas in the WNBA, you break off from plays more, which I mean, both styles are fine. I'm used to both, um, you know, and I think WNBA is a little more one-on-one, -on -one, um, whereas, you know, overseas it's, you know, you're setting up a play for a certain thing that you want. 
Um, and so, you know, I've only been playing overseas in WNBA for a couple of years, but those are kind of the differences that I've spotted. Yeah. And what do you miss most about home when you are overseas? I miss everything. I love home. I actually just bought a house in, in December. I um, saw. <laughs> yeah. So that was a big, exciting, it still is new adventure for me. Um, you know, my sister's actually living with, in my house right now, um, you know, and it's right next to the cities and being able to be close to my family. I'm only about three hours away from Port Wing. Um, and, you know, I just miss just the atmosphere of, being around home, being, um, you know, by my favorite restaurants. I love Starbucks. I don't have a Starbucks here, unfortunately. It's so sad. Oh man. (laughs) I know, but, um, I'll survive. And, um, but yeah, again, I obviously miss that so much. Um, and I miss, I miss being around Iowa basketball, you know, watching, especially recently seeing all the stuff on social media about, you know, the NCAA tournament coming up, it's bringing a lot of memories back for me. I was able to rewatch, um, you know, my senior run in the Big Ten tournament the other day. I can't believe it's been two years since then. It's, it's pretty crazy how time flies. Yeah, sure. And on the Iowa basketball front, I think some people are wondering if you have connected with Caitlin Clark at all or if you have been provided any advice. Yeah, so I don't know her personally, so I have not been able to, um, but I always try to support on social media, and so I think we do have that connection right now. Um, It's obviously been hard to build a ton of connections with the new players at Iowa, especially because it is COVID, um, Mm -hmm. you know, going on right now, and I was able to visit Iowa in November, but It's not much. And I would obviously love to do more, especially when the restrictions, I think, ease off and everyone's more safe and vaccinated and healthy. I'll be able to visit Iowa more and try to build those connections because as an alum, I'm always going to want to build those connections um, and to be able to help them out, even though I'm gone, even though I'm not a part of the program, you know, currently I'm always going to be a Hawk and an alum. And I want to help them in whatever way possible. And especially with Caitlin, you know, she's going to be in the WNBA when she's done. I mean, and so I want to be no a question. source. I mean, no question. So I just want to be a, um, a source to help her out, guide her through that process. Um, and, you know, we'll get to know each other eventually for sure. Yeah. I and I know it's just real quick, Leah. Um, yeah. uh, kind of along those lines and, you know, about mentorship. Um, Senior night for the men. Um, Luca Garza talked a lot about you, uh, just the way your work ethic. You know, he he said there were a lot of days in the gym that you know, he, he was at one basket and you were at the other doing your mic and drill and just kind of um, what your impact was on him and um, what uh, what do you recall about those times? Yeah, I definitely remember those late nights. We both both be in the gym like quite literally both doing Mikeins. I mean, it's kind of a, a something that you just got to laugh about, but um, he's such a hard worker. Um, he works every single day. I see the same, the same thing in him. And as you know, I try to do every single day when I was wearing an Iowa Jersey, um, but it's just really cool to see the respect that he has for female athletes um, to be able to you know, talk about how I've been able to impact him. He's been able to impact me too. Um, You know, he's inspiring. He's been able to really be a leader for his team. And I I saw that early on at Iowa, even as a, as a freshman, sophomore, I could see the potential in him. Um, You know, it's, and that's an attribute to his work ethic, you know, his family, obviously his dad's a big part of, um, you know, why he's so successful, his coach, Fran, um, and it's just a part of the culture that Iowa has really tried to find in the players that they recruit. They're trying to recruit really good people um, and people who have a really good work ethic and care about the team more than themselves. And that's exactly who Luca Garza is. And um, again, it's been really cool to watch his, his um, campaign, especially this year. It's oddly, oddly familiar to what I did. Um, but you know, it's just, it's just us Hawks just trying to help each other out and um, help, help our teams out. So credit to him for what all that he's been able to do, um, you know, and it just shows that you can really do anything when you put your mind to it. Yeah, that star power, I think, I think that was 
That's a good question because I remember, I think he's talked about you in like one or two of his interviews that I've seen. Um, but we had one more question about um, name, image, and likeness and what your thoughts on how that would impact women's hoops. I mean, you were a big name in college basketball and you probably likely could have benefited from something like that. So curious your take on, you know, where that's at. Yeah, it's just a very interesting conversation um, that have that surfaced. I think, um, you know, I think it would benefit. I think women's athletics, women's um, women in sport in general, um, you know, to be able to just get our names out there to show that, um, you know, we're not just female athletes, we're athletes and male athletes are not male. Like there were athletes. So we're all athletes. We're all, um, you know, really good at what we do day in and day out. And, um, you know, to see that happen would be really cool. But at the same time, you know, I, I really love the college atmosphere and what it's all about. And it's all about representing your school and your institution above yourself. And so, I mean, I think it's a balancing act. I think, am I a hundred percent for it? I don't think I am. Um, but I'm also not against it, if that makes sense, because I want that support. I want the names out there um, for women's athletics. But at the same time, I, want, I would like to see institutions and schools preserved at the same time. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's pretty much all the Twitter questions that we have. Uh, Jeff, do you have anything to add before we uh, send Megan on her way for whatever else she has planned today? I, I guess I'm just curious. What's the media coverage like for uh, for women's sports in in Poland? Yeah, um, I we actually have a pretty good covering for um, our local team here. Um, you know, it's pretty similar to what I did. I mean, obviously it's not as much, um, not nearly as much, but you know, I'll have like a press conference afterwards. Um, you know, we'll we'll have like a school photographer or a school. Uh, a team photographer that go comes with us and travels and we have a, we have a decent, you know, social media, but I mean, then there's nothing like, like what I experienced at Iowa. Um, just the support that the media has shown um, the girls at the program. It's been really special. I just want to thank you and thank um, all the media members that really put their time and energy into trying to get the, the sports world to recognize female athletes. I think it's really special to be a part of that. And, um, you know, obviously it's, it's different here. I don't know the language and it's kind of strange, but I just kind of roll with it at this point. You picked up any Polish or any other languages, a little bit of like some words here and there? Yeah, I know a little bit. Um, Je dobre is hello or hi in, in Polish or Jankuja is thank you. Um, I, I know a couple others here and there, but you know, I, we'll see what I do with it. I better, I better get, get going on learning a little more. <laughs> Is there like a language barrier with your teammates there or um, do they all pretty much speak English? Most speak decent English. Um, I think it helps to have that. Um, you know, our coach speaks, he speaks English as well. I think the players speak a little bit better English, so it helps to have them kind of translate, but I know some players do have in different countries, it kind of depends on where you go. They will have a translator with them. Um, I think that's usually in places like China, Russia, um, you know, those kind of places, but yeah, here it's just, you have to rely on your other American teammate, um, or, you know, the, the, the players that are from Poland or from wherever you are. Um, so it hasn't been too much of an issue. Um, you know, you just kind of get used to it after a while. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any teammates from the WNBA right now on your Polish team? I do. Yeah. So the first half I actually had Kathleen Doyle, um, on my team, which was really fun to have her here, um, just to be a part of her, her rookie year. You know, we were in the bubble together and to be able to be in Poland was really fun. Um, and in the second half, um, Shatori Walker Kimbrough. So she played for Maryland. Um, and now she's, let's see, she's was on the Mystics and for Phoenix, but now she'll be playing for Atlanta this year. And so, um, you know, she's a very experienced point guard. I remember playing against her in college all the time. Um, really fun person to be around. So that's been really fun too, to develop those relationships, you know, when you're overseas, but you both played in the WNBA. So I love it. And it was kind of fun when, when Maryland was playing Iowa for the big 10, 
um, championship, we were we were kind of going at each other a little bit, like, <laughs> no, Hawks by five today and that kind of stuff. So unfortunately, it did not work out in our favor this year, but um, I'm always going to root for my Hawks. <laughs> yeah, well, and for sure, there's there's many years to come of playing Maryland, so exactly. I'm sure you'll have your time to win the bets. <laughs> And I had, I had the final say when I was playing. So we're good. <laughs> we're good there. Well, Megan, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. And Jeff, thank you so much for also bringing your basketball knowledge and asking all the questions that I could not ask myself. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the thing I'll always remember about Megan, well, one of many things, um, uh, Rebecca Miller and I went up to Port Wing between her junior and senior year and I, we were up there and I, I'm thinking, please, Megan, just give us two hours of your time. Three hours would be great, uh, you know, kind of in my mind. And, and you know, the, the whole day went by. She gave us her, she and her family gave us, uh, uh, I think, six, seven hours. Uh, we got to see Port Wing. We got to see the lake, uh, good restaurant and uh, where she used to play ball. And, um, you know, that's a trip I'll never forget. And I'm, and I'm sure Rebecca feels the same way. And, uh um, really, really, that, that was one of the highlights of, of my old long career. And, uh, you know, I'll always be indebted to Megan for that. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for making that trek to Fort Wing. I know it's definitely a long trip there. And that was a really fun time to be able to show, to show you my family where I grew up, um, you know, and just to see the coverage for my little town was, was really special to see. So thank you. Awesome. And that story is on the Gazette. If anybody wants to check it out, I read it this morning <laughs> and it's spectacular. And the photography is actually really awesome too. I loved seeing pictures of your hometown and it seems like it's a really beautiful place. It is, especially in the summer. <laughs> All right. Well, thank y'all and uh, have a good day. Thank you.